Hello pretty people. This is the latest Framework laptop. And for the last two months, it's been my daily driver. Is it a great laptop? Yes. Should you buy one? Yes. But are there some things to take into consideration? Definitely. So let's dive in. Let's start with the specifications of the laptop. This laptop has an i7 by Intel, 12th generation inside. Um, it has 512 gigabytes of internal fast storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. The build quality of the laptop is really good, especially if you consider the fact that it's very repairable. Um, when we did the unboxing, we zoomed into Framework as a company. So if you want to know more about the repairability, there's a video up here. Um, there are some minor things. The alloy used is a little bit softer, which you see in some of the corners where it's dented. It also dented one of the modules. The bigger thing here is the hinge. It opens very smoothly, but it's a little bit too smooth. You notice it when you pick up the laptop. It's, this goes way too easy. Uh, you also notice it when you're on an airplane or in a car or on the train, for example, and there's vibration. Uh, it will wobble a little bit, which isn't that nice. The keyboard has a nice layout. It's a little bit mushy, but it does have nice travel, so I like typing on it. There's a fingerprint scanner at the top, which is also the power button. You can dim the brightness of the backlight of the keyboard in three settings, but that won't change the brightness of the power button. The backlight also doesn't have a timeout, so it doesn't dim after 15 seconds, for example, which is a shame, especially when you're watching a video at night. The screen is really good. It's contrasty and punchy and bright. Uh, it is very reflective, something you have to take into consideration. I personally prefer the matte screen, for example, found on the Razer laptop. The color accuracy of the screen is also not that good, the calibration there. There's one thing I've noticed about these glossy screens. Keyboard tend to imprint themselves more on these screens. That's why I carry a cloth with me to separate the keyboard from the screen. This is especially true when you carry around the laptop in your backpack. Um, the MacBook Air, for example, was a laptop that really suffered from this and I see it on other laptops as well. I can highly advise you these cloths. Let's move over to ports because that's where this laptop shines. These modules are replaceable and selectable, so you determine which ports you want on your laptop. I've chosen an SD card, for example, and an HDMI port because I use them a lot. You might say, well, I won't change out the ports that often, but for example, if I connect it to a docking station and the USB-C port is on one end, I can switch it over to the other side if that's necessary. There are four slots where you can install modules in and each module has one port. Uh, this is the USB-C for example. I would have loved if there were some modules which had two ports. Two USB-C for example, or a USB-A and a USB-C. That would have made the laptop even better. You don't need a lot of power to charge the framework laptop. That also means it's compatible with every docking station I've tried it with, which is very handy. This is not true for the Razer, for example, which draws so much power that it's not compatible with a lot of docking stations. The speakers on the laptop are okay, but they could be a little bit louder. There's one thing I didn't notice myself, but everybody else noticed it when I was on a video call. Both the microphone and the video are of very high quality. The built-in webcam is 1080p at 60 frames per second, but especially the microphone is really, really good. The fact that you can switch them on and off with physical buttons is a really big plus. Let's move over to day-to-day -day usage. There are a few things you will notice. First, battery life isn't that good. On average, the tests say four to seven hours, but on an average day, I average only four hours, which is mostly due to slack, for example, draining a lot of battery from the laptop. Another thing you will notice is that the fans get really loud when the laptop is under heavy pressure. For example, when I do photo editing, it looks like the laptop only has two modes here. Either the fans are off or they are loud. So what changes would I like to see on the next version of the framework? First off, I would swap out the alloy that's being used for a sturdier one. I would also improve battery life. Hinge design would be a big one for me 
And finally, I would love to see another screen which is matte and has maybe some better privacy options. So what are the things I would change in the software? Well, the first is the timeout of the backlit keyboard. I would create one so it dims itself after let's say 15 seconds. The second thing I would alter is the screen calibration so the colors are better represented. And finally, I would update the fan speed so there are multiple options where the laptop can choose from. So why did I start this video with the fact that you should buy this laptop? Well, first off, your IT department will love you. They can determine which hardware is present in the laptop and they can select the ports that are being used for various users. The laptop is also very repairable, which is a big plus for the laptop, prolonging its lifetime. So, am I gonna keep using the framework laptop? And the answer is, unfortunately, not. It's going back to our IT department because we're selecting a new default device for our organization and this is the most likely option we have and they need to do some extra testing. I'm gonna move back to my Razer and where this is a far more powerful laptop, I'm really gonna miss using the framework because if I had to make a choice today, I would choose this because it's such a pleasure to use. If you want to read the written review of this laptop, you can find it up here. Thank you, Voice, for making these videos possible, and I would love to see you in the next one. Cheers.